بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم First I would like to congratulate you for the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam maybe for some of you is tonight maybe for some tomorrow night but in any case we are in this atmosphere of months of Rajab and without doubt birthday anniversaries in this month we had birthday of Imam Jawad alayhi salam a few days ago we have birthday of Amir al mumin alayhi salam and inshallah in two weeks we are going to have the anniversary of Mab'ath or Rasala when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the first time received revelation and was appointed by God as his messenger so lots of happy occasions and lots of things to be grateful for and great opportunity also to ask for Allah's additional and Allah's supplementary blessings so that with ma'rifa, with mahabba, with determination, inshallah, we can make most of these blessings, inshallah. In this session, we enter a new section of the book Islamic Plan for Life. Alhamdulillah, after finishing the first unit, or you can say the first part on personal or individual ethics then we did the second unit or section on social ethics then we started the personal or individual code of behavior and now we start the fourth section or unit on social practices or code of behavior in Islam and there can be maybe no better choice than starting with congregational prayer and Friday prayer because Salat is for us Amududdin is the pillar of faith Salat is so important that in Qubilat Qubila Ma Sewaha or in Ruddat Rudda Ma Sewaha if Salat is accepted everything else will be accepted if Salat is not accepted everything else will be rejected so Salat is the pillar now this very Salat is designed in the way that we get together and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together with a beautiful design when it comes to daily ritual prayers which are obligatory which are fara'id whether it be morning or dhuhr or asr or maghrib or isha we are told to get together and follow an Imam who would lead us in prayer for Nawafil you do it on your own but for these obligatory prayers which are every day repeated we are very much recommended to get together and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together so let's see today why 
so much emphasis on saying prayer together, what we can benefit, what are the functions of masajid, mosques as places for prayer. And then we talk about Salatul Jumu'ah, Friday prayer, uh, uh, Friday prayer, which is even greater than Salatul Jama'ah because Salatul Jama'ah plus is a weekly gathering of the community. And not only in the same mosque or center, but within a certain distance, people from all mosques, you know, come together and under one Imam, they would say the prayer. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First, we have a discussion in the book about great emphasis on Salatul Jama'ah. We have many, many hadith about Salatul Jama'ah. Lots of things about the reward, about the merit, and also blame for the people who refuse to attend Jama'ah. One of the things that Munafiqin, hypocrites, used to do in the time of the Prophet وسلم, was to boycott Jama'ah. They were not attending Jama'ah. Of course, at one point, they made their own masjid, Masjid al -Zirar. But they used to discourage people to attend the prayer in Jama'ah, in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shaitan and Satanic people very much dislike people getting together for a bad. They don't like this. Either they stop it if they can, or they try to make it void of the spirit. What is the spirit of Salatul Jama'ah? The spirit of Salatul Jama'ah is brotherhood under the banner of God. Getting together by overcoming our differences, our ego, our personal interests, etc. Even our opinions that may not be necessarily a bad thing, but you know, you have to learn how to give up your opinion for the sake of community. So Satan, Satan or Shaitan, Iblis, doesn't want us to get together for such a beautiful manifestation of our unity under God. So either tries to stop us going there or tries to make it void and make it just a routine thing without depths, without a spirit. So in our hadith, we have many, many hadith about Salatul Jama'ah. But what about the Quran? Of course, it is rooted in the Quran. The Quran also says that we have to get with. Of course, we don't have those many details that we have in hadith about Salatul Jama'ah in the Quran because Quran all together has about only 500 ayatul ahkam the verses which are about ahkam are all together about 500 lots of details are left to the hadith quran gives the main principles uh, prophet and imams gave us the secondary principles because as imam sadiq salam said alayna ilqa'ul usul then Mujtahideen take it further and gives us thousands of rulings. Quran in Surah Baqarah, for example, verse 42 says, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata wa raka'u ma'al raka'in. Even in the case of Lady Maryam, we had this instruction from Allah at one point that that she should do ruku, uh, which means ibadah, with 
others. So she realized, according to some sources, that she should join the uh, priests that were praying in the temple. As a woman, this was not common. And maybe they thought it's illegal. Maybe according to their understanding of law of Torah. But the God of Torah, the God of all divine books, said to Lady Mary that she can do that. In any case, in Surah Baqarah verse 42, it's general. It's not for Lady Mary. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ Establish Salat. Okay. Zakah. Many times, more than I think 20 times, if I'm not mistaken, Iqamatu Salah and Ita'u Zakah come together. But Allah says, don't forget, Because someone says, okay, Aqimu Salah, I Aqamatu Salah fi Bayti. I establish Salat in my house. Whether Salat can be established really at home is a question. Because if you want to give Salat, it's all respect and it's all rights. Maybe it's difficult you know, to imagine that you can do it on your own. It seems that it needs Jama'ah. But maybe someone says, no, it's possible also. To do it alone, aqam salat al zikri, for example. Maybe someone says aqam salat al zikri was enough to do one, you know, person doing salat. Although it's question, but suppose, in order to leave no doubt that it has to be in jama'ah, Allah as after wa'atu zakah says warka'u ma raka'i. This. Salat, which is represented here in Ruku, because Ruku is a major part of Salat, is one of the Arkan. So Allah says, Warka'u ma'arraka'i. So you have to do Ruku with Raka'i. And perhaps one case of proper Raka'in are those that يُعْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ are those raka'un who do ita zakah and ruku together here Allah says آتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَا الرَّاكِعُ Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam آتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُوَ فِي الرُّكُوْ therefore Allah revealed إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُ Very beautiful connection between that ayah in Surah Ma'idah and this ayah. أَغِيمُ الصَّلَةَ Over there says يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَةَ آتُوا الزَّكَاءُ Who says يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاءُ Here says وَارْكَعُ مَا الرَّاكِعِينَ says وَهُمْ رَاكِعُ so not only they do Salat and Zakat, they bring them together and merge Zakat and Salat. This is very beautiful. So, Salatul Jama'ah <coughs> is rooted in Quranic instruction, expanded in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and further expanded in many many hadiths that we have from the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt there are some general rulings that we observe whether we do furada or jama'ah whether we do our salat on our own or we do it together certain rules are common but there are certain rules that are applicable to people who do jama'ah and many of them are actually things that Ma'mumin have to observe. Some of them are about Ibams, some of them are about Ma'mumin, or many of them about Ma'mumin, about the followers. 
about the congregation. And one important uh, ruling here is that Ma'amumin, the congregation, should follow Imam. So Imam is the leader. It's not that they do it together at the same time. They do it after the Imam. So although they perform it together, but this performance has a leader and congregation. Imam goes to Ruku, then they go to Ruku. Imam goes to Sujud, then they go to Sujud. Imam stands up, then they stand up. Neither they precede Imam, nor they fall behind for too long. It's a beautiful lesson for practicing followership. Inshallah, we'll talk about it later. Depending on the number of people who attend Salatul Jama'ah, the reward increases. For example, Hadith says, if two, uh, sorry, if, uh, two people say one rak'ah prayer in Jama'ah, I mean for every rak'ah of Jama'ah, because we don't have one rak'ah Jama'ah, means for every rak'ah. So for example, Salat al is two rak'ah, Salat al is four rak'ah. Okay, so for every rak'ah of Jama'ah, if they have the minimum, two people, Imam and Ma'mum, they get reward of 150 Salat. If three people do one rak'ah, or for every one rak'ah that three people do, it gets to 600 Salat. The reward is 600 Salat. And if then it reaches 10, it becomes very, very high. And if goes more than 10, Hadith says, if all the skies become like paper, and all the seas become ink, and all the trees become pens, and jinns and human beings and angels are writers, they cannot exhaust sawab and reward for one rak'ah of a prayer that muttaqin do, and they are more than 10, 11, for example. Now imagine if there is 100, if it is 1,000. There is a hadith that whoever loves Salatul Jama'ah, Allah and angels would love him. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he used to see that, for example, the number has decreased, he used to look for people and used to tell them that attending Salatul Fajr and Salatul Isha is the most terrible thing for Munafiqin. As if, you know, it's breaking their back when they see people go for Salatul Fajr or Salatul Isha. Because these two are maybe more difficult ones. One is early, one is the last in the night. In another hadith, for example, says that one takbir in jama'ah, Salatul Jama'ah, is 70 times better than anything in this world and, you know, this world and whatever is in this world, dunya wa ma fiha. So, we should make sure that we as community are putting Salat in the top place and Salatul Jama'ah as top priority for respecting Salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran referring to believers that he praises them. He says, الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةِ 
those and of course the ayah continues those that when we give them mukna power we establish them on the earth what do they do the very first thing that they do aqamu salah second atawu zakah therefore whenever you get chance to serve in a community as a leader of the community as a, I don't know secretary as an imam whatever as mu'minin you have to observe this ayah iqamatu salah ita'u zakah and then amr ma'ruf wa nahy 'anil munkar these are important signs of a community which is established and mu'minin that are on the right track some of the outcomes and benefits of salatul jamaah in addition to the great reward there are many benefits and actually these benefits are the reason why allah so much reward has put for this one is that it's a practice is a daily and even not daily once every few hours we have opportunity of practicing brotherhood and equity old young rich poor employer employee unemployed men women different ethnicities all come together for salat great practice of brotherhood when you say salat with someone once twice three times few days few months you become like brother and sister like two sisters two brothers family it's not a, you know uh, like people who go to park for example and walk together even if you go for few months and walk to with someone few months you feel very close to each other but when you go to the most sacred place for the most important sal- uh, ibadah which is salat and in front of allah you spend your time and you remove your heart uh, any hatred from your heart you touch each other you shake a hand if you don't become after a few months like a, you know two brothers then it means it hasn't worked maybe sometimes even uh, with a brother in the mosque i feel much closer because i see him every day every time maybe my uh, the or relatives are far away i love them but why i cannot have such intimate relation with my brother who is in the mosque my sister who is in the mosque for sisters so number 2 salatul jamaa with all its belonging and associates create a kind of collective identity and it's a kind of religious social organization very natural very uh, vibrant very intimate and very simple we don't need big offices and you know board rooms and you know i don't know lots of money and employees you know very naturally people you know they come themselves they don't charge for you know petrol <laughs> they don't say you know you must give me money i come and did they come and they contribute to the mosque everything is done naturally voluntarily and they make huge construction social construction basis of a community are those people who are praying together then everything else come together but those who pray together they are the basis if you want to measure success of any community you cannot just see i don't know how big is their mosque or how many for example uh, prayer halls they have i don't know what facilities they have you cannot just look at those things those are important 
But tell me how many people for every Salat come together? If they have, you know, all the facilities but not many people come together. Or if, God forbid, Salat al-Fajr is not held there at all. Even, for example, in the weekends, for example. Then this community has problem. This community has problem. How can we, at least some of us cannot meet every day for Salat al-Fajr. When few people get together for Salat al-Fajr, they are not just benefiting themselves. If we have insight, we realize that these people are looking after the spiritual borders of our community. They are keeping shaitan away from our community by being awake in early morning and going for Salat al-Fajr. It's very important. So, the second benefit of Salat al-Fajr is building a collective identity for us. And a community without collective identity is just building, is nothing. Community needs collective identity. People of community should feel their happiness or their, uh, you know, failure, all are related with each other. Number three, practice of order. Coordination, collaboration, punctuality. It's very important. Not once a month or once in a few months. Not just once a week. Few times a day at a certain time we get together. We say our Salat together with a special routine, I mean order very important it gives us lots of opportunity to practice punctuality and organization number four it's a practice for following leaders it's a great practice for leadership and followership you remember in hojat academy a few terms ago we had a whole series on followership and over there i explained that more than leaders, we need good followers. Because if you have good followers, good leaders emerge. Among them, the best leaders are the best followers of the previous leader. Why Ibrahim became so great leader? Because he was follower of Noah. <laughs> Why our Prophet is a great leader? Because what taba millat Ibrahim, he follows the path of Ibrahim. Why Imam Ali is a great leader? Because he is a sincere and devoted follower of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi So we need to learn how to become good followers, and then Allah would gift us with the best of leaders. But if you have the best of leaders and not good followers then like Amir al muminin you have to suffer. Like Imam Hassan, you have to suffer. So we need followers. And Salat al Jama is a great lesson for followership. You make sure that you have identified proper Imam. And you agree on one Imam. You cannot say each of us becomes Imam or, you know, we divide community and, you know, we would have few Salat at the same time. No. We agree on one Imam. We wait for him. When he starts, we start. When he is reading, we listen. Not that everyone. We have one voice. Voice of Imam. He goes to Ruku. After that, we go to Ruku. He stands up after. Certain things, we need one voice, he talks. Then we need to do some things together. So we'd say our ruku and sujud, the zikr of ruku and sujud. 
by each person. Never go before a mom, never fall too much behind. Observe distance with imam, should not be you know big distance, not big distance with the people who are in you know uh, jama'a congregation. Lots of lessons there. And it is amazing that we have to recite Surah Al Hamd always. And Allah in Surah Al Hamd has put Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in. He has not put Iyaka Ahbud. Therefore, even if I am at home, I should recite Surah Hamd and say Iyaka Na'bud. So when I am at home, it's like a soldier who was ill and could not join the army. But even from there, he's trying to support them. And he's thinking about them. Iyaka Na'bud. And then at the end, Assalamu alayna, not Assalamu alayya. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah. In ruku, in sujood, warka'u man rakin. In qunut, rabbana, atina fi dunya hasan. Although you can say other dhik, but most of the dhiks that we say are plural. Rabbana, Quranic du'as, many of them are plural. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا ربنا صرف عنا عذاب جنة ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر. So it's a great lesson for following good leader and also leader has to be concerned about his congregation. Although they follow him, but he should also be considerate. He should observe the weakest member of the congregation. أضعف المأمومين if all your congregation are young people, okay, you can make it longer, or you can stand in ruku for a long time, for example. The young people, you know, they enjoy. But if there are old people, if there are people who have, you know, back pain, I don't know, arthritis, etc., so you have to observe them. If there is someone who has a child, and the child is crying, you know, Rasulullah, you know, made salat shorter when heard the child was crying. Rasulullah made salat short. So what does it mean? It's a great lesson. Mamu mean followers follow Imam. But Imam considers how much they can take it. He doesn't, you know, take them too fast so that they all fall behind. Or too uh, slow so that they would lose their attention. Like, you know, for example, if you go for tawaf and you take few people in caravan, you know, in the group of Hajj, you say, you know, I can help you take you for tawaf. I can take you for Ramya Jamarat. How do you take people? They come after you. But if you go too fast, you will lose them. If you go too uh, slow, then other people come and, you know, uh, divide you or these people you know get tired you have to consider a very balanced pace it's the leader and in turn this also implies that imam should be aware of his congregation because how can I consider how much they can take if I don't know their conditions so it means that I should know in my mask, is there anyone who has back pain, anyone who has arthritis? I should know this. Is there any old person coming to my mask or not? This is the way I can, you know, consider the condition of as aful mamu in the weakest member of the congregation. If I don't know who are in my congregation, how can I observe that? Lots of lessons are here. And if we every day, few times practice this, we should become the most organized community in the world. Also, there is baraka in doing things together. Even uh, many problems disappear when we are together. You know, based on my experience, many times when people, you know, 
come and ask for help whether financial or I don't know they have legal issues or they have you know family issues etc many times you see that the people who regularly come to mosque don't have that much problem people who never come or rarely come it seems they have more problems so just being together puts you in a, a safe environment gives you lots of support either knowingly or unknowingly <laughs> because you make a fortress that keeps bad thoughts bad things away from you I'm not saying people who have problem are bad people but I'm saying when you are connected with other good people then you are building a fortress a kind of shield whether you know or you don't know Shaitan find it more difficult to attack mu'minin who have joined their hearts. And then Imam al-Jama'ah, the leader of our congregation, he's the one without whom we cannot do any jama'ah. The, the thread of tasbih. The thread of tasbih is very important, keeps all the seeds and beads together. It's a role of leader. We need leaders. We cannot be all leaders, unfortunately. <laughs> Many times we want to experience this, that you know, we want to be leaders of our own. No, we need one leader. Even if he's equal to us, <laughs> at least we have to agree on something. If three people are traveling, they should choose one of them as their leader. If there is someone who is better, okay. If not, one of them. We are few people. If we have someone who is more knowledgeable, more pious, of course, we make him our imam. But if they are all people are knowledgeable or al muttaqi or say their salat properly, okay, they choose one of them. But we need a leader. Many times our ulama say their salat behind their students. I have seen many ulama saying their salat behind their students because they believe in their taqwa they believe in their knowledge but we need to have one person we need to agree on one person and follow him so imam of salat of jama'ah is like the thread that keeps all together imam has certain conditions we have it in risala in books of manuals for example religious puberty Aql, intellect, you know. Taqwa in the sense of what they call malakatul adal. It's not just enough that he does wajibat or he doesn't make sins. It's not enough because maybe someone does these things but just by forcing and, you know, just <laughs> manages to do this. No, this is not enough. Imam should have malakatul idala. What is malakatul idala? Means established quality. Ulama say malaka is sifatun nafsaniyatun rasikhatun yasturu anha al fi'l bi suhulah min dun tarawi. A kind of established quality in the soul that you can do certain things that are relevant to that quality without too much thinking, with ease. For example, if I have malaka of generosity, if I am sakhi, I have sakhawa, it doesn't mean I'm just doing generous things, <laughs> no. It means that I can do generous things with ease, without lots of calculation. You know, sometimes people, if they want to make one pound donation they make lots of calculations if they want to invite someone for a meal they they have to think you know for a few days you know sh should i invite should i <laughs> this is not generosity yes th to invite is generous act but you have not become a generous person because you don't have malaka so malaka tul adal means he has established 
taqwa as a quality that would help him in doing wajibat and not doing haram and if God forbid of course he's not masoom there's a chance that he may commit a sin it means then that malaka is broken there is a now hole in that malak and therefore he has to do toba and rebuild and restore that malak if you see someone commits a sin then you cannot say your prayer behind him unless he does toba and rebuilds this details you can take from the sala of your marja Mosques have many functions. The main, of course, is ibadah, but certainly a very important function is ta'lim. Sorry, let me connect my charger. So, functions of masjid. First, salat. It's very important. Never, ever, anything should happen to mas in masjid that would conflict with salat. It's the time of Salat. Sorry, we have a meeting here. Sorry, you know, there is a class going here. No. Salat is the priority. And it's the time of Salat, Salat. But should we only do Salat? No. Did in the time of the Prophet Muslims do only Salat in Masjid? No. Many important things were happening in Masjid. For example, we have this beautiful hadith that Rasulullah entered masjid and saw two groups of people, two halqa, two circles. This was not the time of the jama'ah. Between, for example, Zohr and As, between, I don't know, Asr and Maghrib. Anyway, there were two groups of people, two circles. One were engaged in dhikr and ibadah. Another group in learning and scholarly scientific discussion ta'lim ta'allum rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said both groups are doing good salat ibadah dhikr ta'lim ta'allum it's not that they are selling or buying you know things or they are just you know talking about dunya no both of them great but do you know which one the prophet joined he joined the people who were engaged in ta'lim and ta'lum and he said bi ta'lim ursaltu Allah has sent me to teach as a muallim yu'allimuhum al kitab wa lakin so certainly masjid should be also a place of learning Masjid should be a place that we make our important decisions with the beautiful uh, spiritual atmosphere of Masjid after doing our Salat. Then we get together and we make important decisions for the community. We need to raise money. We need to do some charity work. We do in Masjid. People need to get married. They can use the whole of Masjid blessed and also their marriage would bless our community further. But nothing should conflict Salat. Nothing worldly should happen because Masajid are place for remembrance of Allah. Even Allah says, synagogues ch churches and monasteries also have to be respected because they are places of remembrance of allah hasmat had it not been that allah uses some people to defend against some others to keep them away synagogues churches monasteries mosques would be destroyed 
What are these places for? Yudhkaru fi hasmullah kathira. These are places in which Allah is remembered frequently. Imagine you are a Muslim, but you have to respect a church, a synagogue, a monastery. Why? Because they are doing a of Allah. The same, a Christian should respect a mosque, a synagogue, a Jew should respect church and mosque. If we are following God, any person who is trying to devote himself to God, we should respect. And any place which is dedicated to remembrance of God, we should respect. This place is not like a shop or a school even, or for example, although a school is important, but church, mosque, synagogue, these are very special. These are sacred places that every person has to respect and protect. So, one function of masjid is ibadah, zikrullah, but under zikr, ta'lim for remembrance of Allah, charity for remembrance of Allah, marriage for remembrance of Allah, because all are zikr. In our tradition, it's amazing that we used to have masjid, madrasa or hosa together and cemetery there, bazaar there. A beautiful combination. When masjid and hosa are together, means community are connected to scholars, to talaba, and talaba and scholars are connected to community. Beautiful combination of ibadah and knowledge in community. Bazaar is there. When Bazaar is next to Masjid and next to Hoza, these shopkeepers and these buyers are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They hear voice of Azan, they all go to Masjid. There is a cemetery. They are reminded of death. Soon I'm going to go there. I shouldn't cheat in sheep, you know, shopping. So this was beautiful combination that still when you go to many places, you find it. At least if we don't allow, uh, they don't allow us, for example, always to have cemetery close to the community. At least we should have a madrasa, you know, close to it, hose to it, close to it, so that this part remains. Lots of emphasis on building masjid. It's a sadaqiyya jariya. Of course, if there is need, you know, sometimes there is a masjid already enough for people and I make another masjid, this is not going to be rewarded because you are dividing the community. If there is a need, even if there is a need, let's help big, uh, make that masjid bigger, expand that masjid. You know, once I went to a city, I don't mention where, they said, you know, Mulana, alhamdulillah, we have 30 Muharram Majlis here. And I said in, <laughs> in my heart, you know, I don't know, I should cry or I should be happy. Did you really need to have 30 Majlis? Is it because, you know, people could not get together? They had, you know, all the, uh, I don't know, careful considerations of how to meet the needs of the community and then they decided to have in different places to make it easy for people or every few people have started their own majlis. So when we say building masjid is good, it's mustahab, it's sadaqiyya jariya and you make a masjid, you will be given for example a house in heaven. If it is in a wise situation, not that Nauzu Billah we divide the community and keep building masjid. Or for example, we don't have a school, we build another masjid. We don't have hospital, we make another masjid. Our people cannot get married, we make 10 masjid, 10 Husseiniyah. You need wise leadership, wise community decision making processes. If there is a need, if it's not going to divide the community, then of course. What can be greater than making a masjid? What a great honor that you can do something to help people in remembrance of Allah. In that case, of course. 
Attending masjid would be helping in dropping sins, purification from sins, and giving life would become easier at the time of departure. It would help in rising in your degrees. Hadith says a moment in masjid is like fish in water. Munafiq in masjid is like, you know, someone in prison. But mu'min in masjid is very comfortable, very happy. If he has no necessity, he prefers to stay there. It's very comfortable. Imam Sadiq salam said, whoever stays in masjid, after Salat, if you stay for some time in Masjid, you are guest of Allah. And it is upon Allah to honor his guest. When we say it's house of Allah, this is not a, you know, exaggeration. It's house of Allah, so I'm his guest. Uh, I remember once in the uh, center, uh, after Salat al Jama'ah, one of ulama wanted to meet me. So I said, let's sit here uh, in the prayer hall. Because it's a big prayer hall and people were leaving, so we were alone. And so he said, uh, let's go to your office. I said, this is office of God. It's better than my office. It's better if we meet in the office of God, this prayer hall. When a place, mu'minin come, they pray, you know, again and again and again. This is much better than my office. So, if you are in masjid and you stay after salat for some time, you, Imam Sadiq said, you are a guest of Allah. And Allah honors his guest. Then, in the masjid, we have a place which is very, very important, and that is mihrab. Mihrab. Mihrab is place of harb, place of fighting. Whom we are fighting in Masjid? We are fighting jahl, ignorance. We are fighting iblis. We are fighting our egos. We are fighting anything which is dividing us. We are fighting anything which is keeping us away from Imam of our time. This is Mihrab. And Imam is the leader of these people who are fighting against Jahl, against darkness. There is Dome, which beautifully is a symbol of unity and then minarets that not only stand for light but also they look like a person with the dome a person who has raised his hands to the sky to pray to God we have place for making tahara evolution which is very important and also you know People sometimes, you know, travelers or, you know, passengers, etc., can use for comforting themselves to make salat, depending on the, of course, if there are vaqf conditions, etc. The most important masajid, Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabi, Masjid al-Aqsa, who was the first Qibla of the Muslims. And we have, of course, our shrines that are also always with masjid, uh, dedicated masjid as well. Then we have Jum'ah prayer, which is very important because the weekly gathering of not only one neighborhood, within five kilometers pe people should come together. Imam has two khutbah, two sermons in which he addresses current affairs, but he also gives them instructions about taqwa, gives them some lessons, some teachings about ma'arif, about teachings of Islam. The minimum is five. It means that even with five people, you can establish a community. Even with five people, you can organize a group and meet the challenges and face the challenges. 
So I hope, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless our community all over the world for having meaningful presence in their masjid to be gifted with good imams, good organizational uh, skills and talents and heartfelt, united Salatul Jama'ah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.